So this is the first of the series that we're going to do on Bhagavad Gita. There are 700 verses in this book, 18 chapters, and this was spoken by God himself, Krishna, in 45 minutes on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra is a place in Haryana that is still here today, very close to Delhi. And this was spoken 5,000 years ago by Krishna to Arjuna, his dear friend. And this battlefield, this was at the onset of one of the largest wars in human history with almost 600 million soldiers on, you know, together from both sides. And at that crucial moment, just at the beginning of the war, Arjun tells Krishna in chapter one, that my dear Krishna, bring the chariot in the middle of the two armies. I want to see who I'm fighting with. And Krishna, being the charioteer, although God had taken the position of a charioteer, as you can see in this picture, he took Arjuna, that this is who you're fighting with. And Arjun sees that he's fighting with his grandfathers, teachers, cousins, and he gets scared. He feels fear in his heart. He feels compassion. He doesn't want to kill, although they had wronged him, although they tried to strip his wife naked, although they had tried to poison and burn the family. All the wrong things had been done to Arjun and the Pandavas, but still Arjun felt compassion in his heart. And he said, Krishna, I don't want to fight this war. And Krishna, in this book, the whole time, throughout the 700 verses, is inspiring Arjun to do the right thing, to do what God wants him to do, what is dharmic, what is the righteousness. This is a book of inspiration, motivation, where Krishna is giving multiple angles of why Arjun should do what he should do. Because Arjun is a warrior. It is his duty to fight. He wants to escape to the Himalayas and beg. And Krishna is saying, don't escape. Face the reality right now. And we face that every day, don't we? Every day, we go through struggles, corporate politics, family issues. And sometimes people say spiritualists and religionists are escapists. No, no, no. We are the one who face problems right head on. That's what this book is talking about, is facing your problems head on rather than escaping. And how to face them is what this book is talking about. So in the introduction, Srila Prabhupada, so this book, Bhagavad Gita as it is, is coming down through a disciplic succession all the way to Srila Prabhupada, who I'll explain a little bit more. So there are many Bhagavad Gitas in the market, but this is called Bhagavad Gita as it is. And the reason why it's called as it is, is because it's nobody's interpretation. It's nobody's imagination, maybe, probably none of that crap. So I'll turn to the page right after introduction, you can see starting from Krishna, it goes all the way down, coming all the way to Srila Prabhupada. And that's called disciplic succession or Guru Shishya Parampara. That is how the Vedic knowledge gets transferred from one generation to next. So Guru Shishya Parampara is very important if you want the authentic message. So here you can see the unbroken line of teachers and disciples coming directly from Krishna. Now there are many people who can say I'm a PhD in Sanskrit or I'm a doctor or I'm a yogi and I'm a this and a that and they all have their interpretations but none of them are authorized. Just like when you go to a college. You go to a college where it's affiliated to a certain body where the degree is worth something. It's authorized. It's not a Tom, Dick and Harry college where it's just like you know what we'll teach you whatever you want whatever our imagination says. We don't do that. Same thing with spiritual knowledge. We should take it from authorized source where we know we are getting what exactly what Krishna meant when he was speaking to Arjuna. And that comes through the disciplic succession. And Srila Prabhupada, who has very beautifully, very painstakingly taken these verses, the English in Sanskrit, word for word translation, translation, and then the context, the purport, the historic context. Because two best friends are talking to each other. How do you understand the inner meanings? That context has been given, not his own interpretation, but things that have been coming down for generations. Prabhupada would spend hours at night. He would sleep only two hours, from 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. And then from 12 p.m. to 4 a.m., he'd be translating on a dictaphone. And he would take the books of previous teachers, previous acharyas, look at them in Sanskrit, in Bengali, in other languages, and he would focus and very, very carefully every word he would utter in his purpose and record them. And that has come out in the form of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and other books that Srila Prabhupada had translated during his very short 14 years from the age of 70 that he came to America to till he left this planet. And so these books are extremely authentic and they transform lives and hearts. This is how you know. This is a book that is scientific. How do we know? Because in science there is a hypothesis, there is experiment and then there is a conclusion. And 
that should be repeatable under the right environment and right variables. Same way, this Bhagavad Gita, when you hear it from the disciplic succession, just like Krishna was speaking, think about Krishna on a microphone and there is a speaker. There is no change, no editing. Krishna speaking, you're hearing it as it is. And thus, Arjun from, I don't want to fight, to, I am ready to fight. Karishe Vachanam Tava. My dear Krishna, I'm ready to fight for the right reason. From escapist to let's face life. That's where Arjun came to. And that's what you should also come to if you get the right version of Bhagavad Gita with the right explanation coming from the right source of disciplic succession or Guru Shishya Parampara. So that's what you're going to expect for the next several videos that I'm going to make for you. Chapter by chapter, context by context is the message that I am not making up. I have zero credit. It's all coming from Krishna, Lord Brahma, Narad Muni, Vyasdev, Madhvacharya, all these great personalities have brought it down all the way to Srila Prabhupada. So I am simply repeating that in English to you. So take that to heart and practice it. After you watch this video, I want you to actually take out three things that touch your heart and practice it. Put it into real life. And then next week, <coughs> let me know how you have gotten from, I kind of get it, but I really get it, right? In Bhagavad Gita word is called Gyan becomes Vigyan. Knowledge becomes realized knowledge. That's the transformation when you practically apply it. It's not a book that you wrap in red cloth and worship. This is a book you worship by reading and studying it and understanding it and asking questions under proper guidance. This book is about Q&A and the way we will study this is also Q&A. Although I'm speaking a lot, I want you to ask questions, post your comments, questions below and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you.